I'm going to go over exercise 17 and what you need to do to complete this assignment. So I have here the file that you can type your answers into or you can create your own Word document if you would like to. So let's start with number one. So these are often multi-part questions. I'm going to do the first part first. Question one, what are the assumptions for conducting a paired or dependent samples t-test in a study? Paired and dependent samples mean the same thing. That's just another name for it when we call it a paired samples t-test. So in the lecture slides and in the textbook, you have the assumptions for a t-test with dependent samples. So you need to just look at those and list those here. So just, you know, one, two, three, four, so on, the assumptions for the dependent samples test. And those are found in the textbook chapter or in the lecture slides. Which of these assumptions do you think were met by the Linseth et al. study? So do you think that they met these assumptions or not? So look at what they did with the study, look at their description of what they did with the study and the samples, and do you think these assumptions were met, yes or no? And give a little bit of a reason why. In the introductions, we're on number two. In the introduction, Linseth et al. described a two-week washout between diets. What does this mean? So they talk about what this means, but basically they gave participants two weeks in between to get rid of any levels of aspartame in their body. So they had a break between the different diet conditions. Why do you think that that might be important? So give a little bit of analysis there on why you think it was important to have that washout period. Number three, what is the paired t-test value for mood irritability between the participants' consumption of high versus low aspartame diets? Is the result statistically significant? So you need to find what this t-test value is. It's going to be reported in the text or in one of the tables. So find the T statistic, it'll say T equals and have a value. Find that for mood irritability. And then um, that's between the participants consumption of high versus low aspartame diet. So this is dependent samples because the same people are being measured at different time points. So just look through and find that T value for mood irritability. Is that result statistically significant? So we're going to look at the p-value here to determine significance. So find the p-value that they reported for that. And it may be um, in a, a footnote or it may be somewhere else. If there's an asterisk, look at, look at that and see what it says. So we're going to compare this to our level of significance that we set to determine if that's statistically significant or not. So compare that and make your conclusion of whether you think that was a statistically significant result or not. Number four, state the null hypothesis for mood irritability that was tested in this study. So our null hypothesis is always that there's no difference between the groups. So phrase that in terms of this study. And after doing this test and getting the results we just talked about in number three, that T value and that P value, would you accept slash fail to reject, which is the terminology I prefer, or would you reject that null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that there's no difference. Are we going to reject that hypothesis or fail to reject that, that hypothesis? And you will do that based on your comparison of the p-value to the significance level. So review the lecture slides on significance and also on hypothesis testing if you're confused about how to answer these two questions. Number five, which T value in table two represents the greatest relative or standardized difference between the high and low aspartame diets? So what you're looking for here is the largest T value from the table. So look at that table and find which variable had the highest T value being reported. This could be a positive or a negative number, just the largest absolute value is what you're looking for. And is this statistically significant? So determine statistical significance, we'll compare that p-value to the significance level that we set, which would typically be 0 0.05. So do that comparison and give your explanation. Do you think, based on that, that this was a significant, statistically significant result? 
Number six, discuss why larger t-values are more likely to be statistically significant. So a t-value is telling us something about the difference between our two groups. So the larger a t-value, the larger the difference between the two groups. So take that information. Why do you think that we might be more likely to find a significant result if there's a larger difference between the two groups? Number seven, discuss the meaning of the results regarding depression for this study. What is the clinical importance of this result? So you need to look at and see what they found for depression in this study and relate that to your experience as a nurse or your health background. Why do you think that this is a clinically important finding and how can this influence what we tell patients or how patients, um, how patients are uh, given health information and, and diet information. Number eight, what is the smallest paired t-test value in table two? So you need to look at table two and find the smallest value. This could be a positive or a negative number. We're looking for absolute value here. And so find what variable that is for and report it here. Why do you think the smaller t values were not significant? So why do you think you're less likely to find a difference or to find a significant difference if it's a small t value? Just kind of interpret this information and give what you think here. Number nine, this, what, what are the, this should say discuss these. Sorry about that, I'll change that right now. Discuss the statistical and clinical importance of these study results about the consumption of aspartame. Document your answer with a relevant source. Okay, so use your clinical experience and also maybe do some research about the results of the consumption of aspartame. And then if you're pulling in an outside resource here, provide a citation for it. You could look up aspartame information online. Um, so I would just go to Google um, and a place that I could look and I showed you in our class materials in the questions instructor forum how to go to, to pull Google Scholars items when you're off campus but you could go to Google Scholar and search aspartame um, health let's do health risks and then we can see some articles here talking about aspartame and uh, different health conditions. I know that there's a link between aspartame and fibromyalgia. So you could look at that and there's some case reports and some other items talking about um, fibromyalgia induced by aspartame or it or exacerbating those symptoms. So this is what you could do here. Find a citation and remember to cite that properly. Number 10, are these findings Study findings related to the consumption of high and low aspartame diets ready for implementation in practice. So what it wants you to look at here and see is can we take this information and apply this to a larger population? What are there issues here that prevent this from being able to be extrapolated to a wider audience? So I'm going to look at things like the sample size that they had, the demographic information that they had, you know, is this a representative sample of the overall population? Is it a large enough sample? Um, do we need maybe more information? We need a larger study to be done. So how are we going to take these study findings and use them in practice? And then maybe what else do we need to do before we start making widespread recommendations based on these results? So that's what we need to do for exercise 17. And then remember that you want to save this as your own file so save as and then put in here just put in your last name so my last name was Johnson I just put in Johnson there and then save it as an, a file like that so that when you submit it uh, we can keep track that it, it's your file and there's not a bunch of files with the same name 